why do we have to analyze accounts? We've, we prepare the statement of financial position. We prepare the income statement. All these things are prepared. They are items. They are figures. So it is important for us to analyze. Why? Because there are different stakeholders who need different information regarding these values. Yeah. So we want to know if, if we have to know how profitable our business is, we will know through account analysis. If we want to know how, how we are performing regarding the rest of the competitors, we will get to know through analysis of account. So account analysis is important. So let's just go down and see what they say again. The company accounts of financial center we have you have studied contain a great deal of information. These published accounts of limited companies are made available to all those interested in the performance of the business. There, we're talking about the stakeholders. I think it's clear. Mm -hmm. So what is meant by analysis of accounts? It means using the data contained in the accounts to make some useful observation about the performance and the financial strength of the business. So we call it account analysis because we want to measure how successful the business is and how performing the business is. Yeah. The strength of our business we got when we when we compare to those of our competitors. So without, a, without a analysis of account, it is often impossible to tell whether a business is, one, performing better this year than last year. So you won't be able to know if you are doing well presently than previous year. You yeah. won't be able to know without analysis. You won't be able to know if you are, your business is doing better than those of your competitors. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll just go down, please. Let's just go down. So, okay, then they said, the last paragraph, they said, there are many ratios which can be calculated from a set of accounts. This chapter concentrates on five of the most commonly used. These ratios are used to measure and compare profitability or performance of the business. Mm -hmm. So we start with the yeah. concept and importance of profitability. So we'll go to profitability. Profit is an amount of money the business has made after all costs have been taken off revenue. That means profit is total revenue minus your total cost. Yeah. However, profitability is different to profit, although it is related. For profitability, profitability is just measurement of a profit made relative to either, either the value of sales achieved or the capital investment in the business. So when we talk about profitability, it is not the same as profit. Profit is TR minus TC. But for profitability, that means we want to compare the, the profit we make in, in relation to amount of money we have invested into the business or the value of sales. That is profitability. Do you get the difference here? Yeah. The value of sales you have achieved We tell if you are making profit or not. So how are you profitable? So profitability is a, is a measure of achievement, a measure of success in the business. It's not like it is profit. Profit is just total revenue minus your total cost. Yeah. But to talk about how profitable a business is, we're talking about measuring the success of a business. Uh, to measure the success of a business, we could, measure the, we, could, we could measure it in terms of investment in the business or the sales we have achieved over a period of time. Do yes. you get it? Yeah, no, I get it. Okay. So profitability is measured that in percentage. So profitability is therefore a measure of efficiency and can be used to compare the business performance over a number of years. So it's about how successful a business is. Yeah. That is profitability. So it is important to okay. Why is uh, how, why is it important to measure the profitability of a, of a business? One investors, it is important to investors when deciding which business to invest on. So for investors, if your company is profitable, mm -hmm. then they will be willing to invest into it. So for inv if you are unable to give, if your business is not profitable, nobody wants to invest in it because there is investment which is they want return on their investment. Yeah, and the return on the investment should be positive. And to make it positive, it is about profit. So if a company is not profitable, investors will not be attracted to it. Mm -hmm. That's for investors. Two, for directors and managers of the business, they want to use it to assess if the business is becoming more or less successful over time. This might lead to the directors or managers needing to change the operations of the business to improve profitability. So for, for the managers and directors, they want to know, they want to compare their performance right now with the previous performance. So is, are they doing well right now than before? If they are doing well, then they, they find a way of maintaining that or to do more. But if they are not doing well, they need to change their production method yeah. so that they can be more profitable. So this is why profitability is important to be measured. I think it's clear. So for profitability ratios, we have growth, return on capital employed, which is our net profit divided by capital employed, multiplied by 100. Our net profit is always gross profit minus revenue or expenses multiplied by the capital employed. And you know the capital employed it is your... Issued share plus no capital employed issued share. 
Yeah. 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 Then we have um, we have gross profit margin, which is your gross profit divided by revenue multiplied by 100. And for gross profit, it is always sales minus cost of sales. And revenue, uh, gross profit is sales minus sales all over sales multiplied by 100. I think it's clear. That's gross profit margin. Then we have uh, net profit margin, which is net profit divided by revenue multiplied by 100. And our net profit is always gross profit minus expenses multiplied by 100. So that's about profitability ratio. So here they said, okay, let's go down. Let's see, we go down. The concept and importance of liquidity. Yeah, we go to the, the concept and the importance of liquidity. So the, this measures the very important feature of our business. Liquidity is the ability of a business to pay back its short-term debts. So it's the ability of a business to have cash with it. Because for your short-term debts, you have to pay them as soon as now. Yes, and you, yes. the only way to pay is to have cash with you. Yeah. So if a business cannot pay its suppliers for materials that are important to, for production, to production, or it's important, or if the business cannot repay an overdraft when required to, it is said to be illiquid. So the business is it owes money to may to may force it to stop trading and sell its assets so that the debts are repaid. That is liquidation. So when there's liquidation, it means the business is selling its assets to pay off its debts. I think it's clear. Okay. That's liquidation. So liquidation will come as a result of illiquid because the business is illiquid and the creditors are forcing it to pay mm -hmm. by selling its assets. So we have liquidity ratios. We have the current ratio, which is current assets divided by current liabilities multiplied by 100. We have asset test ratio, which is current assets minus inventories divided by current liabilities. Yeah. I think you know that already. Yeah. So liquidity ratios, what can they tell us? One, one liquidity ratio result is not very useful. When the ratio, uh, when the ratio result is compared with others, then some effective analysis can be done. Here are some, okay? They said current ratio is one to one and 1.5. Okay, here they said we have one, and in 2017 we have 1.5. Mm -hmm. The current ratio has fallen between 2017 and 2018. This could be because the business has bought, and so, well, for current, let me just explain current ratio. If the business is having high current ratio, it means the asset is more than liabilities. Okay, yeah. And the implication of this is that the business has bought more of assets than liabilities, or the business is having more debt debtors than creditors. Mm, yeah. Do you get it? Yeah. They said this could be because the business has bought and used many more suppliers, supplies, but not yet paid for them. It could also be because the business has used cash to pay for fixed assets. Yes, you have bought a lot of non-point assets. Mm -hmm. If the current ratio is one point, okay, here they said the ratio, okay. So it fell down. It fell. But the asset test ratio from 0 0.5. Oh, okay. So here they are comparing the current ratio with asset test ratio. They said the current ratio is acceptable and much higher than the asset test ratio. So if the current ratio is higher than asset test ratio, is good. Why? Because when the asset test ratio is low, yeah. it means the business is not at a risk. To pay off its debt, it means that the business can pay its debt mm -hmm. based on the fact that it can sell inventories. Yes. Do you understand? Yeah. So we understand the asset test ratio might be too low. The business might be at a risk of not being able to pay its short-term debt from its liquid assets. Cash accounts receivable, like debtors. The great difference between the two results is because of relatively high inventory. So if there's high inventory ratio, if there's relatively high inventory in the business, that means you don't have cash. The cash is being tied down with inventory. Mm. You are running the risk of not being able to pay your debts because you need to sell your inventories to turn them to cash to yeah. pay your debts. Yeah. So a business must not want, uh, a business must not have a lot of inventory tied down. If it has, it won't be able to pay its debt and it will be short of cash. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? It will be illiquid. It will be illiquid because you don't, you have, you don't have cash. Yeah. Though you have stocks, but these stocks cannot pay cash. They cannot pay. They are stocks that have to be turned into converting into cash, so yeah. so the business must not keep inventory for a long period of time. If it does so, it will be liquid, and it will be might be forced out of trading. Mm -hmm. Let's go down. The why and how accounts are used. Users of accounts. What do they use accounts for? Managers. They will be able. Are you there? Yeah. Managers. They will be able to have much more detailed and frequent accounting information than any other groups. 
What do they use the account for? They will use the account to help, they will use the accounts to help them keep control over the performance of each product or division of the business. Managers will be able to identify which part of the business are performing well or poorly. Account data will help in decision making, for example, whether to expand the business, change price level, or close down a product or division that is not doing well. Yeah. For managers, why do they need to use account? They need to use account to understand each unit or department that is doing well or not doing well. They use it to make decisions about to expand or not to expand. They use it to make decisions about closing down department that is not doing well or not closing down department that are not so doing well. Each department, not for the whole business. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, each department would, would come together. They will accumulate them to know which one is doing well. That's why we have contribution. Oh, contribution. Yeah. yeah, for each department, we have to measure the contribution of each department yeah. to know which department we have to shut down or not. Managers are the ones to take decisions about this. Mm -hmm. But before they take decisions, they have to analyze the accounts. So that's for managers. I think it's clear. Okay. okay, for shareholders, for shareholders, limited companies are owned by shareholders and they have a legal right to receive the published account each year. So why they need to know the value of their shares, if it's going up or going down. Yeah. So shareholders and potential investors want to know from the income statement how big a profit or loss the company is making, because this is where their profit will be shared. Mm -hmm. So the profitability ratio results will be compared with last year's. The higher the profitability ratio results are, the more likely shareholders are to want to invest by buying more shares in the company. They want to know from the statement of financial position if the business is worth more at the end of the year than it was at the beginning. This will also assess the liquidity of the business. They do not want to invest in a company with serious cash or liquidity problem. So for shareholders, they want to know the worth of the business. And that's not the only thing that they are interested in. They are interested in knowing the profitability of the business. Because if the business is profitable, it means their dividends will increase. Mm -hmm. And as soon as their dividend increases, the value of their shares will definitely increase. Yeah. So nobody wants to invest in something that is not going to give return on investment. Mm -hmm. That is the point there. And aside, that is from the income statement. They will go to the state of financial position where the investors also want to know if the business is not having cash problem or not, if the business is having cash problem or not. They get to know through the current assets. So they measure the, they measure the current ratio, they measure the, they measure the current ratio, they measure the asset ratio mm -hmm. to know if the business is, 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 is healthy mm -hmm. in terms of having cash with it or not. Okay, yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So having cash with you means that you are liquid. But not having cash with you means that there's a serious problem. So nobody wants to invest. And the work of a business will be known through the statement of financial position. Yeah. So this is why shareholders want to have interest in account analysis to know the profitability and to know the liquidity of the business. Yeah, Claire. And the work of the business. Yeah, the work of the business. So thank you. Then the banks. For the banks, they want to know if the business, the banks, right? No, we right. have one before the bank. Oh, uh, okay. Creditors, yeah. creditors, thank you. For the creditors, what their interest is is about the credit worthy of the business. They want to know if you have more creditors that more suppliers that you have not paid to. Mm. They want to be sure, and they want to know how profitable your business is. If you are some, you are a business that they could give uh, credit sales to or not. Yes. So if you are making profit, they will compare the profit you make last year with this year. So yeah. if you are making more profit for, compared to last year, then they will be able to give you profit. They will be able to give you credit in terms of trade. But if you have more, because based on your statement of financial position, mm -hmm. the value of your creditors are there. So if, your, if the value of your creditors are high, they would not want to be part of it. Yeah. But if you're having low creditors, that means they can trust you that you don't have much people to pay or much businesses to pay, then they can sell to you. They can even give you something. No, this can't won't come here. This can't won't come. What they need here is to know oh. if that is what you want to pay. Oh, okay. This can't come where you want to pay. But what they need now, based on our account analysis, is to know the, the value of your creditors. Are you owning more businesses or not? Are you owning more suppliers? If you are owning more suppliers, they don't want to be part of those you are owning. Yes. But if you are owning less, based on the value of your statement of financial position, then they can sell to you. Yeah. Do you get the point of yeah. suppliers here? Yeah, no, you know, they want to supply you, but they don't want to, they don't want to lose their money. So how can they know if you have more suppliers that you have not paid or not? They can only get to know through your statement of financial position, mm -hmm. the, not, the current liability. So if you're having less, then they can be they can be rest assured that you can pay them. But if you're having more, they wouldn't want to. Yeah. That is for creditors. Okay. Clear now. Then for the banks, they want to give you a loan, yes. But before they could give you a loan, they want to be sure that you are not having long-term debt, long-term liabilities. 
if you're having more long-term liabilities, they wouldn't want to be part of it. Yeah. And they want to be sure about they want to be sure that your asset is more than your liability because they would need that, they would need it as security. That's for that. Yes. You get it. Mm -hmm. For government, government wants to be sure that you are paying the right value of tax from your profits. And how can they know? They will they only be, they will be able to know, they'll be able to know through your income statement and your statement of financial position. Because you would have, yeah, from your income statement, basically, mm -hmm. from your income statement, because that is where you get your net profit. Yeah. So whatever your prof whatever profits you are you have declared, the percentage that you have to pay on tax has to be paid. So the tax office wants to be sure that you pay that amount. Yeah. Clear? That's for government. Workers and trade union, they want to protect the interests of their workers, their members. Yeah. So they want to know, they want to be sure that whatever payment you give to them is a reflection of their work. Okay. Do you get it? Yeah. That is for workers and trade unions. Yes. Clear? Yeah. Other businesses, they want to measure your performance. They want to see if you are doing well than them. Yeah, okay. your competitors. Yeah, that's they right. want to measure if you are doing better than them. Yeah, is it clear? Yes. Is that all about that? That's the limitation. Please. Now we go to the limitations. Yeah. So go to the limitations of using accounts and ratio analysis. One, managers will have access to all account data, but external users will only be able to use the published accounts, which contain only data required by law. So the one of the limitations about accounts and ratio analysis is that. Yeah, the managers have access to all the accounts, but they will only provide government or whoever they need to provide the information that is required by law. Mm -hmm. So that means we don't have detailed analysis of how those lists are being compiled. Yeah, how do they make up these things? We don't know. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you have creditors. How do they make up the creditors, debtors? How do they make up these? You can't know those things. I guess. Yeah. But it's only accessible to the managers. So that's one of the limitations. Two, ratios are based on past accounting data and may not indicate how our business will perform in the future. So these ratios, we use it for the previous account information. That's for the last year. So what happens to us this year or next year, we don't know. Mm -hmm. So we can't use this to predict what happens to us next year. Yeah. It is not known. Three, accounting data over time will be affected by inflation, rising prices, and comparison between years may be misleading. Mm -hmm. There's always inflation. So if inflation occurs, sales might fall. And if sales fall, that means the data or whatever estimate we've done for the future will be wrong. So that means uh, there's always inflation, which changes the price, mm -hmm. the price level. Different companies that use slightly different accounting methods, for example, in valuing their fixed assets. These different methods could lead to different ratios, ratio results, therefore making comparisons difficult. Mm -hmm. Example, for decreasation, some businesses might use straight line. Other business might use reducing balance. Another business might use uh, value, uh, value of assets. Yeah. Revaluation. Revaluation. Yeah. So it depends. So whichever one they use will not give you the same, will not give you the same information. Mm -hmm. So that means comparing different businesses will not might not be easy when you use their analysis of accounts to compare. Yeah. Because they have different ways of calculating their accounts. Yeah. So depreciation is an example of that. Yeah. Is it clear? Yes. Do you have any other thing there? Okay. So that ends the chapter for analysis of account. accounts. Analysis of accounts, okay? Mm -hmm. So in the next class, we go to... Uh, that ends even the chapter. That ends the chapter, right? Yeah, we're going for uh, external influences on business issues. Okay, thank you.